everyone, my name is David McPhail and I'm an author, I write books for a living and I'm here today to talk to you about uh, Aberdeenshire Library's Summer Reading Challenge for 2020, okay? And I thought I'd start off by talking to you about some of my books. Um, these books here, uh, they're called Top Secret Grandad, that's the name of the book series, uh, but both individual books are called, this one's called Death by Tumble Dryer and this one's called Death by Soup. Uh, and it's uh, right here behind me. These books, they're about this kid and he's called Jay and he solves mysteries with the help of his ghostly granddad who's just behind my shoulder. It's all a bit spooky. Um, uh, that's what this book series is about. So there's a lot of crime in it and mysteries and stuff like that, but it's quite funny. Um, Jay decided to become a, te a detective uh, about nine months before this book, the first book in the series, Death by Tumble Dryer, started, uh, he decided to become a detective because his father mysteriously disappeared off the face of the earth. Uh, his father was a stage magician and he was called the Great Maharishi. And um, he was on stage and he was doing an act on stage in front of an audience and it's called The Great Vanishing Act. And it's this thing that magicians sometimes do. It's quite popular. You might have seen it, actually. I don't know. But what, what's, what happens, or what's supposed to happen, is that this box is wheeled onto stage. It's like a coffin, a tall coffin on wheels. And uh, the, the great Maharishi, he, he had this big kind of jewel in the middle of a turban thing and a cape, very fancy cape. So what, what would happen is his assistant would open the door and the great Maharishi would give flourish of his cape and he would jump inside the box and his assistant would close it and then she would spin it round like that and then she would put her hands underneath the box so that you knew there was no false bottom. She would get like a hula hoop and put the hula hoop over the top so that you knew that there was nothing out the back and no wires or anything like that. And then she would tap it, open it, and lo and behold, what's supposed to happen is he's gone. The, the, the magician has disappeared. That's the great vanishing act. As soon as the audience sees that, whoa, they go wild. They, they, they go wild with applause. Just, that's fantastic. How did he do it? Um, and then, a minute later, just when the audience's applause has died down, the assistant's standing like this. Uh, and the applause dies down a little bit and a light goes up in the corner of the stage in the wings. And suddenly, the great Maharishi prances on like this. Ha ha! And the audience goes wild again. Yeah, it's amazing. How did he do it? He opened the box to there. It's amazing. That's the great vanishing act. That's how it's supposed to work. But... On this one particular night, nine months before Death by Tumble Dryer starts, uh, it went it went wrong. Something happened, and what happened was it was going fine. Uh, the Great Maharishi got into the box. His assistant, you know, did this with her hands, did that with the hula hoop, span it round, tapped it, opened it up. He was gone. They applauded. She stood like that. And the light went up in the corner of the stage and nothing happened. The applause started to die and the audience looked at each other like, what's going on? And uh, his assistant was going, come on, come on, where are you? Nothing happened. The great Maharishi disappeared, vanished off the face of the earth and was never seen again. Uh, and that's how the, that's why Jay decides to become a detective. He wants to find his dad to find out what happened to him. Now this book here is the second book in the series. It's called Death by Soup. And it's in the Summer Reading Challenge uh, book collection for this year, which is called Silly Squad. So I hope you'll find it. You can check it out. Uh, get it online, things like that. I'm going to read to you from this, okay, from chapter one of Death by Soup. It was raining in Glasgow. Which shouldn't come as a surprise. It's a bit like saying it's sunny in Mallorca. It's always sunny in Mallorca. Or saying the air on Mars is a bit thin. Uh, yeah, obvs. This is Glasgow. It rains a lot. But this wasn't your normal rain. The kind that gently pitter patters on your roof and drips off umbrellas. This was a full-blown monsoon battering against the window of our flat in a wild, soggy torrent. Usually... I'm the one caught, up, caught out in weather like that, because that's just my luck. 
I'm normally that drenched boy you pass in your warm car, soaked to the skin and looking like something a drowned rat would have a good laugh at. But on this occasion, I was lucky enough to be indoors. In the kitchen, in fact, sitting at the table and looking out through the rain-blurred window. Something's not right, I said. What do you mean, boy? Asked Grandad in an Indian accent fused with Glaswegian. Or should I say, the ghost of my Grandad, who sat beside me. Well, he didn't really sit, having no body to sit with. More floated in a sort of sitting position, which he often did to make himself feel less like what he was. An actual, real-life spectre. Not that it did any good. His face still had a green tinge. The kind you get with a bad case of seasickness. And he was completely see-through. To top it off, he wore a Macintosh raincoat with the collar turned up, a fedora hat and a pair of sunglasses. He looked ridiculous. Thankfully, nobody else could see him but me. I leant forward and whispered so that Mum couldn't hear. Can't you take your coat and hat off? We're indoors. I am a ghost, Jayesh, he replied. I can do what I want. Uh, sorry, what's not right, dearie? Asked Mum, flouncing around the kitchen. She was cooking supper, though it looked more like she was doing some kind of weird modern dance. She had long flowing hair and wore a long flowing scarf and a long flowing dress, all of which were completely impractical for cooking or indeed any form of human activity. I stared down at the letter in my hands, which had dropped through our door out of the blue just a few weeks before. It was from Yummy Cola, the drinks company. Mrs K Patel and Master J Patel, congratulations! You have won a fabulous weekend break at a luxury country house hotel. We look forward to welcoming you at Brightborough Manor. The thing is, Mum, you said you never entered any competition for Yummy Cola. She scoffed. Why would I do that? Fizzy drinks are bad for your aura. And they make you burp. That figured. My mum never drank anything that wasn't 100% organic. Her idea of a refreshing beverage was a glass of carrot juice. If she wanted to push the boat out, she might squeeze some honey in it. But that was about it. Don't you get it, I said. If you didn't enter the competition, and I didn't enter the competition, how did we win the competition? What? She said, nonplussed. I mean, how did we win a competition we didn't put in for? Mum blinked, then shook her head and ladled something hot and steaming into a bowl, which I hoped, against all hope, was edible. Jay, there's an age-old saying, never look a gift horse in the mouth. She is right, son, said Grandad. And besides, look at the brochure. He jabbed his finger at the photos of the hotel and the rooms, which looked quite plush. Jacuzzi's in every room. So, I whispered, you can't even use a jacuzzi, you did. Do not rub it in, he said, offended. What did you say? asked Mum. It was always so difficult having two different conversations at once. I was constantly getting mixed up. Frankly, people were beginning to think I was weird. Apart from Mum, of course, who was already a bit weird. There's another saying, I replied. If something looks too good to be true, then it probably is. Huh, half grandad. Kids these days, they do not know they are living. When I was your age, living in India, I would have walked 20 miles for a jacuzzi. Jacuzzis weren't even invented then, I said. But then mum looked at me quizzically, wondering what I was talking about. I shook my head. Oh, nothing. Look, it's how we won is the question. You think it is some kind of scam? Said Grandad. A scam? I rubbed my chin. I'm not sure. It's just, it's just odd, that's all. Grandad was staring intently at the overhead light. His spooky eyeballs were twirling around in their sockets, watching a fly that was circling the lampshade. His face flashed with determination. That fly is annoying me. I'm going to ghost whack it. Grandad had ghostly powers. He could touch things, move things about, and even kick people. As for his spectral sneezes, achoo, they could blow up tiny whirlwinds. His special powers had helped me out of more than a few tight spots during a detective work. But lately, he'd been suffering a crisis of confidence, a bit like a striker who could no longer score goals. He didn't believe he could do it. Grandad floated higher until his eyes were level with the bottom of the lampshade. 
He studied the fly's movements closely for a few seconds before slowly stretching out his arms. Yeah! He slapped his hands shut on the fly. Unfortunately, his hands just went right through each other. The fly didn't feel a thing. It just kept going round and round in circles. Grandad's face fell. And he sunk back down to the table like a deflated balloon. I am a rubbish ghost. A scam! Mum snatched up a mallet and whacked the large gong that sat on the table. A gong that was about a foot away from my head. Boing! My eardrums quivered. And then she yelled at the top of her voice. Dinner! Which at least stopped my eardrums quivering, but made them wobble instead. All this was for Granny's benefit, as she was hard of hearing. Granny, right, was a tiny terrier of a woman. And I mean tiny. She was once offered the part of one of Snow White's dwarfs in the local panto, and she was short of some of the children playing the part of the dwarves. Lately, she'd taken up karate. She burst through the door, dressed in a white karate outfit, with a bandana wrapped round her head. Huzzah! She half swaggered, half waddled to the table. I blamed both the swagger and the waddle on the bodybuilding supplements she'd been taking. She said she wanted to look like she was in an action movie. I wasn't sure that a movie about karate grannies would be that successful. Ah, there's my girl, said Grandad, grinning at her fondly. Just as beautiful as the day I married her. <clears throat> Granny suddenly snarled. A flash of white sleeve and she lashed her arm out and karate chopped the fly in midair. The fly dropped with one pathetic final buzz. Then thrashed around helplessly on its back on the kitchen floor. Grandad's grin only got bigger. Ah, what a woman. Well, said Mum, if it's a scam to get money out of his dearie, they chose the wrong people to mess with. She wasn't wrong there. We didn't have any money to scam. Times were tight. Especially since Dad disappeared off the face of the earth ten months previously. Mum plonked the soup bowls in front of us. Ta-da! She said, as if she'd just done a magic trick. Kale, seaweed and turnip soup. I stared down at the contents of my bowl. My stomach turned. It looked like something you'd find at the bottom of a ditch. Smelt like it too. Yes, times truly wear tight. I glanced at Granny. Her face was as white as her karate outfit. Her eye twitched at Mum. No, she doesn't eat it, she croaked. Mum gave an airy flick of her hand. I had a big lunch. Grandad chortled. Ah, for once, I'm glad I'm dead. Come on, eat up, Mum smiled. We're off to the hotel early tomorrow morning. We're going to make a day of it. Granny caught my eye and nodded towards the plant pot near the kitchen table. See, Jayesh, said Grandad, the things your granny does for you. And he was right, because she was offering me her turn at using the plant pot to dispose of my dinner, which was amazingly generous, given the food that was on offer. I nodded thankfully, then waited until Mum's back was turned and tipped the contents of the bowl into the pot. The plant gulped it up. <sighs> A big rubbery thing. Goodness knows how it survived with so much of Mum's cooking poured into it, but it did. In fact, it looked like it was thriving. Granny winked at me. She adjusted her bandana, picked up her spoon and then took a deep breath. I placed my hand on her shoulder and gave it a sympathetic squeeze. She reminded me of one of those kamikaze pilots from the Second World War preparing to dive to their fiery, or in her case, soupy death. Well, that was chapter one of uh, Top Secret Grandad and Me, Death by Soup. When I uh, plan my books out, because these books, uh, there's a lot of characters involved, there's a lot of mystery, there's lots of different stories happening and everyone's connected in a different way. I use mind maps, which is kind of like a, I don't know if you've heard of them, they're like spaghetti diagrams connecting everything up. I'll show you. You see, um, Jay Patel, he uses mind maps in order to solve his mysteries. In fact, he used one. There's one in Death by Tumble Dryer. It's like that. Can you see it? With lots of different things, lines connecting up different characters and events and places like that. So I use that. 
And um, you can use that for plotting your own writing. So just remember that. So when you're, you're coming up with story ideas and characters and different locations and things like that, and you, you need to kind of keep it in your head how everything's linked, it's quite a useful thing to have. I use it for all my books, actually. Um, <clears throat> so that's Top Secret Grand Anatomy. I, I almost forgot why I was here, which is to talk to you about uh, Aberdeenshire Libraries and the Summer Reading Challenge. And this year, it's the Live Life Aberdeenshire uh, Summer Reading Challenge, that's what it's called. And it starts on Monday, the 22nd of June. So don't forget. And all ages can take part from uh, birth right up to 12. Your whole family can take part as well. And this year, they're doing things slightly differently. And it's pretty cool. It's because of the lockdown and everything. And um, so to take part, they're asking you to register online, okay? And access an online passport. To, to the challenge and it's on the Live Life Aberdeenshire website and I'm going to give you that, I've written it down okay. It's www.livelifeaberdeenshire.org.uk forward slash live dash life dash at dash home forward slash. That's it, just remember that and that's the website. So the challenge is quite simple. Uh, uh, they're encouraging you to read and share and listen to six books or more on the digital library, okay? And there will also be some online activities that for you to complete that they will be announcing uh, at the beginning of each week during the event. And when you've finished a book or a challenge, they can you can then give yourself a little tick uh, in your interactive passport, okay? And once you've got six ticks or more, you can enter your card into a prize draw. Okay, so it's pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, it's a really fantastic challenge to get involved in. I strongly recommend it. Remember, remember, visit the website from Monday the 22nd of June. You can get logged on and get going. Something really cool to do for the summer. <clears throat> you keep up with your reading and everything. Uh, so have fun. Happy reading. And um, I'll see you again sometime, okay? Bye-bye, guys.